It's Friday night. I'm on my third Bumble date of the week, and I'm two tequila sodas into no longer caring if Jake in FinTech thinks I'm smart. He doesn't. He thinks I am pretty, and so that is who I will become. He explains cryptocurrency to me, and I nod at all of the appropriate times, pretending this isn't the definition of deja vu. We order another round. The room is packed with young, beautiful bodies. The music competes with Jake's stories, but he knows he has my full attention. I wait for my turn to speak, my giggles bookending anything he has to say as if he's the most interesting man in the world. I make up a little game with myself, counting the songs that pass by until he asks me a question. I try and smile with my lips closed, concealing the gap between my teeth. I excuse myself to the bathroom for the opportunity to check my phone, assess the slow decline of my life, and reapply my lipstick. Each step towards the mirror feels a little too shaky for comfort. The line for the bathroom stretches endlessly through the hallway, girls teetering atop, surrounded, teetering atop heels surrounded by friends. Electric possibility hangs in the air. I stare devotedly down into my phone, scrolling through a sea of thin, blonde, white desirables, waiting my turn to peer into the mirror and see how I will never stack up. The smudgy bar mirror reflects back the image of the women that came before me. We have a family nose. Its gentle slope travels back in time, adorning the faces of my maternal lineage. It's delicate, a feature that doesn't draw attention to itself. Cute as a button. Just like any respectable woman should be. I reach for my bag, pulling out a glossy pink to paint across my lips. Understated. My mother was and is especially beautiful. I see so much of her in the woman looking back at me, her full lips that gently parted to reveal all the ways I wasn't good enough, all the ways I was too loud, too big, too much. The soft feminine features that blur into the background so that men can always stand in the spotlight. I press my lips together, transferring the shine from top to bottom, using my peeking finger to wipe away any excess from the corners. I note the little chips in my nail polish, hoping they don't reveal too much about me. My mother taught me to always put sunscreen on my hands. She said it was the first thing that would announce your age to the world. I think about her long, slender fingers and the priceless rock that proved that she mattered, that she won her place in a loveless marriage. My sister was a smart one, talented. Despite being a gifted pianist, her little hands barely stretched across an octave. Our family nose was centered on her face, but her blue eyes had a sparkle to them the glimmer of shiny trophies announcing her place in the world, the reflections of cracked open college acceptance seals and the depth of everything she could be. They told her she could be anything she wanted, anything she put her mind to. She was different, but my mother and I were the same. The highest honor achievable for women like us was earning love. My only chance at acceptance was just a right swipe away. This week, I will turn 24. My mother was 21 when she brought me into the world. They say I have plenty of time, but the only thing she taught me to value is rapidly decaying. I reach my hand up towards my forehead, trying to smooth out the space between my brows, anticipating the wrinkles that will begin to form there. My mom's cool eyes rest just underneath, a misunderstood longing welling up inside of them. I can see the sadness escaping from the corners of her closed mouth smile. I wonder who first told her that she was too much. I wonder if the mirror she holds up reflects back the image of me. I begin to run my hands through the unruly waves that brushed against my shoulders, wearing it the longest it had been since I was a teenager. My mother would be so happy that I started finally growing it out again. My blonde hair came from my father's side. My mother continuously dyed hers to match. My sister and I grew up hearing that God intended for a woman's hair to be her crown and glory. <laughs> Every Sunday morning before church, we'd sit together in front of my mother's mirror. She'd wield her bright red hairbrush, comb through a nest of tangles, and transform her wild child's golden locks into the crown. The stubborn knots would be swept away, and she'd top me with a bow, fixing me into the daughter she wanted. Over time, the bows were replaced with shouting matches where my mother's voices rivaled mine. Sunday mornings were replaced with Saturday nights and my jaw stayed clenched tightly as she went through the list of the ways that I had embarrassed her that week. 
Maybe it was a wave of contempt or the persuasive pull of the YouTube video, had a DIY of pixie cut. I sat on the floor of my childhood bedroom and sheared away any hope of winning my mother's approval. My crowning glory in my mother's eyes and probably God's too, fell to the floor in thick blonde clumps. I didn't know who I wanted to be, but I didn't want to be pretty in those anymore. In those days, I felt a crackle of fire inside of me. I longed for something to be proud of. But as fires often do, it burnt itself out. Anger was softened into acceptance, and lofty dreams of being different were traded in for something that I could hold. My mother was beautiful, but I needed her to be so much more. Fragmented thoughts begin to fill the empty spaces in the bathroom all around me. I reach my hands out to steady myself against the sink. The porcelain feels cold against my skin, maybe cold enough to extinguish the dwindling flames inside. The fluorescent lights in the bathroom start to feel harsh. Everything is illuminating back. I want to love the woman in front of me, but I don't know how. So I return to my date. We talk about his life, his childhood, but he's no longer a real person to me, just somewhere to store my insecurities for a while. Jake reaches his hand across the table, brushes his hands through my hair, and finally asks me a question. Do you want to get out of here? I nod my head yes. 